It was a cold, rainy day, one that had followed several other days just like it. On Tuesday, September 16, 1997, the Weather Service reported a full inch of rain had fallen during a 24-hour period. The accident occurred at approximately 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Jerry Cade and his crewmates began topping the fifth pole, their last job of the day. Jerry and a crewmate were working up in the bucket truck. The top of the pole was tied off with a line and secured to a tree nearby. A third ground crew member put tension on the line to pull the top of the pole away from the crew in the bucket truck toward the tree. Jerry was operating the chainsaw and he made the cut. There is some uncertainty about how the accident happened. The pole falling wrong may have been due to the weight of the insulators or the cut used, causing the pole to twist toward the boom. The 20-foot piece of pole fell toward the bucket, breaking the boom and throwing Jerry, who was not tied in, out of the bucket. He fell 20 feet to the deck of the truck below. His partner managed to stay in the bucket without getting hurt, but Jerry did not survive the fall. Due to massive head injuries, Jerry was gone before medical personnel arrived. Unfortunately, there are no official safety codes when it comes to pole topping. After looking into the cause of Jerry's death, Aztec Electric and the Department of Labor and Industries felt it was important to make this video to demonstrate safe pole topping methods and show it to everyone from the experienced veteran to the first day employee on the job. I'd like to run through the safety checklist every employee on a pole topping job site should know. Before a crew ever starts a pole topping job, it's important to complete the following checklist. The purpose of forming an initial safety plan is to review each job site for ground and weather conditions, locate any potential hazards, locate all electrical lines and sources in the immediate area, establish safe truck positioning, inform all employees of job site conditions, the types of pole cuts and how they are used, and answer any questions employees have regarding safety policies and procedures. This information is gathered and discussed at the first tailgate safety meeting. It's important to always review and double check the clearance requirements any time a crew is working on or near energized lines. Contact the owner or serving utility of the line to obtain clearance necessary to perform the job. Document the time and person giving your crew clearance after it has been obtained yeah, and make sure all grounds and shorts are applied. Every job is different. The foreman and crew must conduct a meeting to review the work to be done at the start of the day's work and any time working conditions change during the day. The tailgate team meeting should include review of the job site specific safety manual, safe working conditions as outlined in the Washington Administrative Code, determine what safety equipment will be used, decide which lines will be guarded with what types of barriers, Discuss type of cut to be used, a wedge cut is the safest. Decide on the safest procedures for removal of the pole tops and discuss job site emergency procedures. Just as important as job pre-planning is having the right type of equipment on a pole topping site and knowing how to use it. General personal protection equipment must be worn at all times. The following is designed for your own personal protection as well as the protection of your fellow workers. Hard hats to protect you from overhead hazards safety glasses to protect your eyes from flying debris, gloves to protect your hands from cuts and other hazards, earplugs or muffs to protect your ears from loud sound levels, full body harness designed to distribute the force of a fall over your full body, lanyard attaches a full body harness to an anchorage point in case of a fall, flexible ballistic nylon pads or shafts to protect your legs when necessary, lineman's rubber gloves test certified with keepers, used as personal protection barriers against electrical shock up to 5,000 volts. Rubber blankets, test certified, heavy rubber blankets to protect you against accidental contact and electrical shock when working on or near an electrical line. Spiral line sleeves, fiberglass cylinder shaped barriers placed over and around energized or potentially energized lines. Grounding equipment, backup conducting connection equipment used in place of the earth. Other types of general equipment used on a pole topping job are aerial man lift or bucket truck designed to elevate you to the work area on a pole, line truck or digger derrick used to secure the pole and remove the piece when the pole is cut, hand line, a rope and pulley assembly used to raise and lower material and equipment, rope slings, 
heavy braided rope or line used for rigging and securing the equipment to the pole for removal. Chainsaw. After the pole topping method has been determined, use to cut off the top of the pole in one piece or in several chunks. There are two recognized methods of removing the top of a pole. The first is called chunking. That's when the top of the pole is removed in several sections such as these. For safety reasons, chunking is a preferred method. This allows alignment easier control of the smaller pieces. This may take longer, but it's well worth the extra effort. After the bucket truck is positioned safely and the outriggers are on level, stable ground, all hardware and attachments are removed and lowered down on the hand line or with the boom and the line of the truck to reduce the weight on the pole. A piece or chunk is cut off the pole in a small enough section that an employee can remove it and lower it down with the hand line. This process continues until the pole is cut down to the desired height. An alternate method to chunking is the single section method. This refers to the removing of the top of the pole in one large piece. The bucket and line truck are stabilized at safe distances from each other with the pole easily accessible from either truck. The boom of the line truck is placed near the top of the pole where the single section will be removed. The two employees in the bucket take a sling up and attach it near the top of the pole utilizing a choker attachment. The sling is attached to the winch on the boom of the line truck. The ground operator takes up the slack on the winch line in order to place a small amount of tension on the line away from the employees in the bucket. The employees in the bucket truck then make one safe and proper cut. The ground operator then utilizes the line truck to move the single section of the pole away from the employees in the bucket and lowers the single section of the pole to the ground. After the top of the pole is removed, the crew spends the time to clean up the area of all the debris the acting utility and owner are notified immediately that we are clear of the lines and leaving the project. This video is dedicated to Jerry Cade. Our hope is that the safety information provided here will help prevent this type of accident from happening again. Jerry was a conscientious employee, a journeyman lineman with over 20 years of experience. But nothing we do now can bring Jerry back. What we can do, however, is remind ourselves that safety first is not just a catchy phrase we teach our children. Good safety practices reduce the risks we face every day in our jobs. There's an old saying, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. Maybe the crew was in a hurry to get that fifth pole procedure over with. Maybe not. But the crew surely never thought something like that would happen to them. Well, it did happen. What we can do is honor Jerry by learning from this tragedy. For Jerry, we should never let this happen again. When it comes to safety, it's important to plan your work, then work your plan. Attempting to shortcut a job may get the job done faster, but is it worth the risk to yourself or your crewmates? None of us can avoid risk in our line of work, but we can do our level best to prevent the chances of accidents occurring. An ounce of prevention is worth its measure when lives are at stake.